I, I did clean up somewhat the slides uh, that were, well, that had a lot of errors yesterday and uh, filled in a little bit of the stuff that was on the boards. It's not, not complete, but, uh, and, and for today I have slides for at least half of the talk, I think. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, this, this is close to where I ended up. Yes? So, so is it still the main same file, Vogan.ho.pdf? So what I'm showing now is Vogan.ho, but the, it, just Vogan.pdf, uh, the, e each slide is a single page. Which is yeah, no, so, I'm sorry. Um, I, I want to upload it so, so people can see it. Yeah. Upload Vogan.ho.pdf. I, I think it's my opinion that it's better to do the ones that, that have a whole page at a time, but... Uh, Isn't that H.O.? No, H.O. stands for... Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I had it backwards. So we just occasionally make mistakes, I wanted people to know this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dragan's story about this is, uh, I, I, I was wrong four, four years ago. It's when I thought I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so I'll post these. It might take a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I, I had introduced the, these Lie algebra cohomology functors that, that uh, in the setting when you have any Levy subalgebra, the, the only requirement is that the uh, sorry, any parabolic, the only requirement is that the Levy factor be fixed by the Cartan involution. Uh, that, that gives you this uh, Levy pair of the kind that Annegret was talking about constructing yesterday. Um, and in that case, you can make Lie algebra cohomology uh, that carries GK modules to L, L intersection K modules. And the slightly deeper fact is that it carries modules of finite length to modules of finite length. So th this is an important piece of the Langland's classification. That's why I mentioned that. And <clears throat> I, I also wanted to mention what Lie algebra cohomology has to do with the action of the center of the enveloping algebra. And, and the statement is that uh, if you have any G module, you can make the center of the enveloping algebra act on the Lie algebra cohomology. One way to do that, I, I, I said this Lie algebra cohomology was computed by some complex, um, I'll, I'll write the words, that this H, P of U, V, that this is the cohomology of some complex <clears throat> where, where the terms are, are uh, um, uh, of the p exterior power of u in, into v, um, p plus 1, um, uh, like this. And um, what, what you can do is make the center of the enveloping algebra act uh, just by acting on V. And if you do that, uh, th this action uh, commutes, th th this, this is D, this commutes uh, w with D and, and therefore uh, descends to the cohomology. Um. <clears throat> ah. So uh, the, the theorem is that that action of the center, which, which really just a version of the action of the center on V can be computed by uh, the, the L representation on cohomology. We've got this uh, Chevalier homomorphism 
from the center uh, for G to the center for L, and um, well, that that that's the the theorem. That uh, the the point is that if you know the L representation on cohomology and it's non-zero, then you know the infinitesimal character of the representation. So this is one of the hints that uh, the, the Sli algebra cohomology is telling you interesting things about the representation. So I, I, I talked about this uh, Chevrolet isomorphism uh, and well, the words that I just said, that if you have a G-module of infinitesimal character lambda, then the, this Lie algebra cohomology, which is a representation of L, uh, the infinitesimal characters that can appear there are these twisted Weyl group translates of lambda. And one, the other motivation for talking about cohomology is why do we have these row shifts everywhere? Well, th this theorem of Chevrolet is one of the sources of the row shifts that, um, well, that's not an explanation, but um, th this, 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 Chevrolet theorem becomes much more convenient if you twist this homomorphism uh, so that it really goes to the vial group invariants. Uh, but, but that requires shifting everything by row. Okay, so that, that's uh, what I did last time. And uh, so here, here's uh, what the Langman classification is supposed to look like. Um, so I, I, I've, I'm talking about irreducible representations of, of a real reductive group, and we can make the real reductive group disappear. We identify these things with irreducible GK modules, so, so there's no real form anymore. There's just a Cartan involution. Um, and those things are supposed, the Langlands, this is the Langlands classification part. They're, they're supposed to correspond roughly to characters of real Cartan subgroups up to conjugation by the real group. Well, I, I, I brought the real group back in in this statement, but I can make the real group disappear again. Um, I, I, I can just talk about theta-stable Cartan subgroups and HT modules. So, so I, I talked about this notation, uh, which, which is the, and Jeff talked about it in, in much more detail, but this is the, the atlas uh, notation for parameters. Okay, so how are we going to get at that? We're just going to start with an irreducible GK module, and somehow, I, I want to find a Borel subalgebra with a theta-stable Cartan, which is nice with respect to this module. That, that requires explanation. So, so you look at the fixed points of theta on the uh, Cartan subgroup, and, and then you, you look at the N cohomology of M. And, well, what this nice choice is supposed, the, the way you, what you want in this niceness thing is that you can find a cohomology class. Uh, uh, so it means a non-zero cohomology class for this M. And, well, the, this cohomology, <coughs> excuse me, carries an action of, it's an HT module, and so, well, if you pick a, pick a particular HT uh, invariant line in here, that, that's, that's a one-dimensional HT module, and, and that will be the Langlands parameter of M. So that's what we're trying to do, and um, I, I want to 
well, when I sat down to write these slides last night, <clears throat> I, I did a bunch of calculations on paper to see how I could show you how to do this for SP4, and I decided that I'm an idiot. Uh, we need to start with SL2. So here's what you do for SL2. Um, so the, the real groups SL2 are, uh, K is C cross, somehow or other, M is an irreducible GK module. Uh, oops. Uh, the, the characters of C cross are indexed by integers, and, and so you can decompose M under K, it, it's, it's Z graded. <coughs> and excuse me, when I was talking about um, representations of, of SL, when I talked about principal series for SL2, I, I wrote down a basis uh, for, for SL2 in, in which this H was a basis vector for K. Um, and the, well, so, so H acts by scalars on, on each of these uh, graded pieces, and the bracket relations tell you that X raises degrees by two, and Y lowers degrees by two. So, so that's the, <clears throat> the, this wonderful picture of what a, a GK module for SL2 looks like. It, it's, first of all, a, a Z-graded vector space. So the definition, the, a, a lowest k type of m is a smallest integer with the property that the grading and the, the, that, the, that weight occurs in the GK module. Smallest means an absolute value. Um, Atlas is capable of computing absolute values, but Mark frowns every time you ask it to do that. And so I'll, I'll give a slightly different general definition that doesn't have absolute values when uh, I do this for general G. Um, yeah, so smallest means absolute value. So if, if this absolute value is bigger than two, well, if you have an integer bigger than 2, and you subtract 2, it gets smaller, strictly smaller. So if mu naught is, is bigger than or equal to 2, then mu naught minus 2 is not allowed to occur, because mu naught was the smallest weight that occurred. And since y carries m mu naught to m mu naught minus 2, that tells you that y has to kill m mu naught. And therefore, this weight space is contained in the invariance uh, for y. Well, the, the multiples of y, <coughs> excuse me, that's the nil radical of a parabolic. Uh, and so what I've done, I've produced this weight mu zero in h zero of n y with coefficients in m. In other words, I mean, this is a lot of strange functorial words. The, the statement is that if the, the, the m is the lowest weight module. If, if the smallest weight that appears is at least 2, then things have to stop at this lowest weight, and so it has to be the lowest weight module. Um, and <clears throat> consequently, M is an irreducible Verma module. The, the Borel in question is, is this NY plus uh, T, and T is K, is SO2. Um, and we're, we're getting uh, a BY Verma module at this highest weight. The Langlands parameter is given by <coughs> excuse me, this compact, this fundamental Cartan T, where theta acts trivially, the, the lambda bar, well, 
it's more or less the weight of cohomology, except I have to do a row shift. So uh, I have to add rho, but the, the, uh, for this Borel, the rho is minus 1. So adding rho gives me mu naught minus 1. And, and the A part of this uh, torus is zero, the, the new is zero. So that's the Langlands parameter, nothing to it. If the lowest k-type is less than or equal to minus two, things are exactly the same. Uh, you get a highest weight modulo, a, a Verma modulo of highest weight mu naught. The Langlands parameter is uh, same t, th this, uh, I'll, I'll write, um, uh, th this, this, in this ds plus case, well, this mu naught minus one uh, belongs to one, two, three, four, uh, like that. And in this ds minus case, mu naught plus one belongs to minus one, minus two, minus three, like that. <coughs> so it, it, from these two cases, we're getting almost all possible Langlands parameters for the compact of Cartan. The, the only one which is left out is uh, zero. Uh, and we've also taken care of almost all the lowest k types. Uh, the only case that remains is when the, this module has a weight which is either trivial or plus or minus one. So for example, if the weight is, well, if the weight plus one occurs, and you try to act by y, that's taking you to the minus one weight space. Minus one is the same size as one, and, and so the, this lowest idea doesn't give you any information. So we gotta do something different in, in those cases. So that's another slide. So suppose you've got uh, now a module which contains this SO2 type, either the trivial one or, or plus or minus one. So what I'm going to do is attach to M a Langlands parameter on the split Cartan subgroup, so diagonal matrices in SL2, where the theta is acting by inversion. The, this is the x equals 2 case from, from Atlas. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll, I'll use the upper triangular Borel uh, of algebra. <coughs> and I, I want to define a, a module for this carton. Uh, the, this new, uh, the, the parameter in, in A star, well, A star is just the dual of the, of the Cartan, I want this new to be the infinitesimal character of my module. And I, I need uh, a, a character of, of this plus or minus one group, uh, plus or minus the identity, and for the character there, I use the parity of the lowest k type. That parity is well defined. The, the lowest k type might not be unique. If this weight plus one occurs, then probably the weight minus one occurs too, but plus one and minus one have the same parity, so we're, we're safe. Um, so here's the proposition. <coughs> in, in the slides from lecture two, there's a discussion of the principal series for SL2, and in the notation that I used there, um, the we're talking about um, the principal series representation with continuous parameter, this infinitesimal character plus one, and uh, the, the parity, well, the, this parity parameter. And the statement is that the, this 
if all I know is that this GK module contains one of these K types and has this infinitesimal character, then I can conclude that it must be a composition factor of that principal series. If this infinitesimal character is negative, oh, I should have said the infinitesimal character is only defined up to the vial group. So it's only defined up to sine. Um, if I choose it to be negative, then this principal series representation has a unique irreducible sub-representation, and, and that's M. And in this case, the, this Lie algebra homology of, of N with coefficients in M uh, has includes this weight uh, for the uh, for, for the diagonal carton. If um, if nu s is positive, then the m is the unique irreducible quotient. Um, if the infinitesimal character is zero, things are a, a tiny bit complicated, and I'm just going to bypass that for the moment. Okay, uh, so what do you do for general group? So the, the big idea for SL2 was looking at the smallest representation of K that occurs. So I want to do that for a general G. So I need to have a way to say how big is the representation of K. So I've got the, this complex reductive G and the fixed points of theta and this irreducible GK module. I want to start with a maximal torus inside K. Then the centralizer of that maximal torus in G is the uh, is a Cartan subgroup of G called the fundamental Cartan. This is come up a lot, but in the atlas point, of, well, this is the Cartan where the action of theta is as close to trivial as possible. So, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to fix and switch to writing. Um, I'll, I'll say that theta <coughs> acts on, on TF uh, by the <laughs> distinguished inversion. Um, uh, and, and so this is a, a, as close to trivial as possible. And, and so th this TF corresponds to Th th this is uh, Cartan number zero uh, for, for Atlas. Because for, for Atlas, the idea is to start with this distinguished involution and then work as you move away from it. So, so you start where things are easiest. Oh, okay, so, so I want to start with that torus. Then Uh, sorry? So, so T0 was a maximal torus in K. So I, I just chose a maximal torus in this reductive group K. And what's TF? TF is the centralizer in, in G uh, of that torus in K. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll write an example which is too complicated. Uh, just to uh, let, let, let's take G is, is GL two R. Uh, well, uh, GL G of R. So 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 G is is GL two. C uh, theta of, of G is G transpose inverse. Uh, K is O O two C. And, and so this T naught is 
SO to C. Uh, so, so these are the matrices uh, cosine Z, sine Z, minus sine Z, cosine Z. <coughs> Um, and and then this TF uh, is the well it, 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 it's R cosine Z R, R sine Z minus R sine Z R, R cosine Z uh, for, for Z and C and R and C cross. And I think that's the. Um, so I, I well, I, I just I don't know. The, the, this, this isn't so interesting. I, I mean, this, yeah, this isn't as complicated an example uh, as. Uh, in this case, uh, th that's actually equal. Um, in, in general, what, what happens is, is that this T naught is the identity component of uh, the uh, of that. Uh, anyway, so. These are algebraic groups, so every character of this fixed point of theta comes from a character of TF. This is a lattice, so this character group is a quotient of lattices. There may be some torsion in there, never mind. So I want to fix uh, a Borel for, for K, uh, and I should have called this uh, T naught. Uh, And, and a positive root system. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually more interested in the opposite Borel, uh, where, where the no radical is the negative roots. Uh, and I look at the, the sum of the positive roots for K and call that 2 rho C. And I write S for the dimension of, of well, either of these things. Uh, so, if you start with an irreducible for K, you can attach to it a bunch of highest weights. Um, what that means, these are the weights that appear on the NK fixed vectors in, in this representation of K. Um, the, because of disconnectedness, there may be more than one highest weight. Don't worry too much about that. Um, so, well, I'm interested in Lie algebra cohomology, so, so I'm writing down the, this fact about highest weights. I'm writing it in terms of Lie algebra cohomology. Uj is the highest weight. That means it's in the zero nk cohomology uh, with coefficients in, in e tau. I, I'm also interested in cohomology using this opposite uh, Borel. And with respect to the opposite Borel, this mu j is a lowest weight. And what turns out is, is that uh, mu j plus 2 rho c uh, is a, a weight uh, of this top degree uh, homology for the opposite plural. Okay, so th this is just highest weight theory in various guises. Um, so if, if I fix one of these highest weights for tau, I now want to choose a positive root system for G in this fundamental carton making this, I don't want to make mu dominant, I want to make mu plus 2 rho c dominant. The idea is, um, what, I, what I'm trying to do here, 
어, 어, I, I, I want to construct a uh, cohomology uh, starting with uh, th this HS of NK coefficients in e, e tau uh, and in this weight mu plus 2 rho C. Uh, and <coughs> so, ah, uh, sorry, it's this opposite. Uh, and to do that, the the positive, the right positive root system to choose is the one that makes mu plus two rho c dominant. So you do that, and now I want to define the the rough height of tau. Uh, the, the tilde is for the rough part to be the sum over these positive roots of the pairings of mu plus 2 rho c with alpha check. So in, in the old days, before I uh, learned to keep weights distinct from co-weights, I, I would have said you take the length of mu plus 2 rho c. And that's fine. I, I mean, you can do that. but it depends on choosing an inner product, which is not quite nice. And, and so it's better to do something that, you know, I, I've chosen these positive roots to be positive on mu plus 2 rho c. So th this, this sum is measuring how big mu plus 2 rho c is in the direction of the roots in a very natural way. So, uh, that this is a, a good thing to define. This is not the atlas height for a k-type, but it's closely related to it. Uh, I'll explain the relationship eventually. Uh, but anyway, the, the, this is kind of the origin of, of the more sophisticated atlas height. Uh, Oh, and, and I, I, I should, should have said that, that in the case of, of SL2, uh, this H tilde of, of mu, uh, what, let's see, is the absolute value of, of mu. See, uh, so, so you can make atlas compute absolute values without actually having absolute values. The, the reason, I mean, there are no absolute values in, in this formula, but what I did was I picked out the set of co-roots that were non-negative on, on mu. It, yes? Uh, 